Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome to all people out there to our next webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. Today is the uh, 10th of August uh, 2017, 7 p.m. as the usual time for those uh, power webinars uh, at JFD. Yeah, my name, as always, uh, Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski. Uh, I think uh, more or less now you know me uh, even better than a couple of weeks before and the kind of webinar you can expect uh, from me. Today's topic, breakout strategies. So that is really um, one of my favorite uh, kind of strategies to be traded. Um, you will see a lot of examples uh, during the webinar um, with uh, some well-defined uh, parameters uh, that you can trade those uh, breakout strategies by your own simply by applying the same kind of parameters. I will go into all the details. You will get all the details. And by the way, if you want, you can have already the slides. You can simply download uh, the slides uh, via your GoToWebinar control panel. So I have uploaded that PDF already. And uh, maybe it's uh, especially interesting because uh, later we, we have really some sets of uh, parameters uh, which describe a breakout strategy. And I repeat myself, it's really one of my favorite because I like that kind of concept. Um, and uh, I will show you three accounts, live accounts at JFD Brokers um, where I trade exactly those kind of strategies. So as always, I'm not only talking about what I want to present here. No, I trade what I present. Okay, um, yeah, before we really start, you know, I have, um, I have to show uh, um, a few seconds the slide as always, especially today, we, we have really some nice trading setups. But finally, as always, if you trade those uh, setups, if you trade um, things I um, deal with in that webinar, you trade on your own. But I think uh, everybody knows that and uh, is aware of that fact. So whenever there's a question, simply um, you can use the chat um, channel as already somebody did here. So good evening back to you as well. Uh, yeah, that's always nice to have so many people with uh, in those uh, webinars. Um, yesterday was a German webinar. We, ne we nearly hit the limit uh, of uh, participants. Um, but anyhow, today is the English one. And we go on directly into the topic. So what is breakout strategies about? Um, I, I want first to show you some real basics of uh, that kind of strategy because it's it's um, a setup with um, different variants, but therefore we have first to focus on the real basics of breakout strategies. Why do we trade them? How do we define um, breakout strategies? And then I go one step further in details um, because I want to share with you some indicator here. Uh, that indicator, if you want, you can just send me an email uh, as always uh, and I will send around that indicator as well because it is uh, free available in the web as well. Uh, that indicator helps you to trade breakout strategies simply by drawing some lines, uh, you will see. And then um, once again, I will show you how even such a strategy, which is a little bit more complicated to get that strategy into an Excel sheet, um, but I succeeded in getting it in an Excel sheet as well. I will show you some results there. And uh, as always, uh, even that Excel sheet you can have. I make, I make already the remark, uh, this time it will not go direct out via email because the Excel sheet is that big. It's a uh, 56 megabyte Excel sheet uh, for S&P 500 breakout strategy, but I can send you a Dropbox link um, and then you have access to that Excel sheet as well. And then finally, as mentioned already, three good examples with all the details um, for um, two currency pairs 
um, euro Japanese yen, then the British pound, US dollar, and then the combination of uh, DAX and uh, S&P 500. And all are breakout strategies which uh, work well. Um, and we will look into the live accounts later as well. So what is basic of breakout strategies? The first thing we always need is we need to define a range. And you will, I have a picture uh, on my next slide uh, and we will go through the picture as well. But let's first start with thinking we have a range. Whatever range we have, that range has an upper limit and a lower limit. So that is a range is now defined. How is it defined? Maybe we look for the previous day for whatever underlying that we used to say, okay, um, we take yesterday's high as the upper limit and yesterday's low as a lower limit. And then we have that range defined. We might take the previous week or whatever. Or we do it a little bit different, and that's the way we will do it mainly today. We set up two times, a range start time and a range end time. For example, uh, 5 o'clock in the morning until 10. And then we ask ourselves, hey, within that time period, what is a high and what is a low? And then we have, once again, a well-defined range. Or you may go for pivot points, for example, uh, and take uh, the upper pivot point and the lower one as being um, the definition of your range. What's always then the next step is, if you have such a range well-defined, then you typically place two orders. One by stop order at the upper limit of that range and one sell stop order at the lower limit of that range. And in most cases, if you run a strategy like this, then you do those two orders as OCO orders. Uh, OCO means one cancels the other and it's exact, exact, exactly meaning uh, what the name is. So if for example, the long trade, the buy stop order uh, is triggered, then you simply cancel, you delete the sell stop order on the other side. And um, that is meant by OCO, one cancels the other. Um, OCO orders are not um, directly accessible in uh, MT4, but uh, there's a tool from JFD that you can even place those kind of orders uh, so that uh, whenever the, the one is triggered, that the other is cancelled. Or simply you do it manually um, that you, you cancel the other one. The stop loss for those orders is typically the opposite range limit. That means if we have an upper limit and a lower limit and for the buy stop order, the stop loss with the lower limit, and that's all. And vice versa, of course. So it's a breakout strategy. That means that the main assumption and um, that we go for those kind of strategies is that we have a well-defined range. And if now the price breaks that range, that this breakout uh, will be long lasting, will be sustainable, will continue in exactly that direction um, for some time. So that is a basic definition of any breakout strategy. You have a well-defined range and then you go on with that breakout in which direction it might occur. Let's look for something like that simply by looking to a chart. And let me more or less repeat what I have had on my last slide within the chart once again, because then I think definitely everybody will know um, how a breakout strategy is defined. And then we can start on working 
with exactly that kind of strategy. What you see here um, is uh, not a real fresh chart on uh, Euro, Japanese Yen. I think the chart might be even three years old, but it doesn't matter. It's just to explain how a breakout strategy works. When I created exactly that picture here, I started first with two lines, two vertical lines, one vertical line at midnight and a second vertical line at eight o'clock. So I draw exactly those two lines and that was a start. The next step has been I went on with two horizontal lines because within that time frame, midnight to eight, there's a high within that price. And that is exactly here. So therefore, uh, um, one horizontal line exactly here. And there's a low within that time frame. Unfortunately, this is the last candle which created exactly that low. Therefore, um, I know that uh, there's a, a small line here hidden. But anyhow, so that was a reason to draw the lower limit exactly at this position. And now the, the range is absolutely well defined. Starting from the uh, time range, midnight to eight, we created now a price range and therefore those two horizontal lines. Think about the time is now eight o'clock. And that was exactly the time to place two orders. Because at eight, we know now the price range. And therefore, we, um, we placed one buy stop order exactly here and one sell stop order exactly here. Stop loss is always the opposite side. So for that sell stop order, stop loss is here. And for that buy stop order, stop loss is here. The assumption is immediately visible. If you have a breakout to the north, hopefully it goes on and then we follow. If we have a breakout to the south, hopefully it went on and we follow. And that is exactly the breakout strategy. Look for here, for that example, I think around here, where now my, uh, my cursor is, the order has been triggered. The short order has been triggered. So from that moment onwards, we are first short in the market. And second, we delete, we cancel the buy stop order on the other side. And then, as always, when a presenter here um, talks about strategies, the price is doing exactly what uh, I want him to do. Uh, it went south and finally hitting my take profit, which is here. So that is exactly the breakout scenario we um, want to deal with. And that is just an example at Euro Japanese Yen. Immediately, there must, must be at least one question. And the first question might be, hey, take profit, where? Hmm. In my case, I applied the rule, I put take profit exactly at that position that I have a risk reward ratio of one, meaning exactly the distance of the range itself has been added here to the south. So therefore risk reward ratio one, and or in another language, my take profit multiplier, in this case, is one. Thinking about those kinds of strategies more from a mathematical point of view, I would describe this strategy as being a strategy with three degrees of freedom, or more in the trading language, uh, not degrees of freedom, then we would call them parameters. Okay, what are the parameters here? The parameters would be range start time, in my case, um, midnight, range end time, in my case, eight o'clock, and third parameter, simply the take profit multiplier, or in a trading language, it would be the risk reward ratio. 
And that's all about breakout strategies. But of course, there's now the question, hey, what times I should go for? Eight, maybe 10 to 12, whatever. Risk reward ratio one, three, 1.8, that's the question. So we have to, to find good parameters for a given underlying, um, because you, you might even and, um, imagine that you cannot trade with one set of parameters all the different underlyings, simply because when we look for forex pairs, there are typical times for those forex pairs. For example, if we would have the Australian dollar within that um, um, forex pair, then it might be even times in the night because then um, the life starts uh, in Australia. Same maybe for Japanese yen. If we go on for euro, it might be um, yeah maybe eight, nine, ten o'clock, and then later the U.S. dollar comes into play. So therefore, different times for different underlines. But before we go into the exact um, good uh, parameters, um, let's think about further options about that kind of strategy. Um, and I got already here one hint uh, in, in the chat, but um, it's now exactly here uh, on my slide. Um, you may think, okay, maybe I don't want to trade both directions. Maybe there's an, an, um, an overall trend in that specific underlying I'm looking for, and that trend already goes to the south. So why? should we place orders to the long direction. So an EMA, for example, as being used as a trend filter might be a good idea. In this case, well, we would simply ask ourselves, hey, uh, we have an EMA. We are, for example, below, the price is below that EMA. Then we only place the short order and we forget, forgot the, uh, forget the long order. Just one idea that we, if there is um, a certain trend, that we only trade into the direction of that major trend. You might think about other options or other filters, for example, like day of week seasonals. You remember we have had that DAX strategy using uh, the day of week as an indicator for a certain direction. Uh, by the way, that strategy runs really well. Um, so you find that uh, in the records and uh, on the YouTube channel, that strategy is performing quite well. Um, I'm amazed that uh, we always go exactly into that direction uh, the seasonal tells us. But anyhow, so that might be a trend filter or a filter for long short as well. There are two other filters I want to mention here as well. One might be that we define a maximum range. So think about typically you run a strategy with um, range times from 8 to, to, to 10. And then for whatever reason, do you, exactly in that time frame, we have a, a big move. So we, we, we create a quite big range then you may think, okay, no, no time for a breakout scenario out of that even big range. So you set a maximum range size, uh, might be one idea. Maybe you compare it to previous days. You use indicators like an ADR, or you might even look to um, the volatility itself. So something like an ATR, if that is too high, that you say, no, um, I don't want to trade today. It's a good idea. Um, I have something like that in one strategy as well, but not for today. It's another one. Um, minimum range size that we will apply today. Think that we, about a range which is simply quite small. So that might 
B, because uh, we are around Christmas and uh, stock markets calm down, and so nothing happens at all. Is that a good time to go for a breakout strategy? Answer, no. So if that created range is too small, it might be a trigger to say, no, no breakout scenario today. Another reason for looking for a minimum range size is more trading driven. Um, since we use that multiplier uh, to, to define our, our target and think about a quite small range, then just by wiggling around, our stop loss might be hit. So it's good to have a minimum range size because we have to earn at least the spread and commissions additionally when we trade. So two small ranges are not good for um, breakout strategies. Um, and there might be some other reasons. Uh, just your gut feeling uh, might tell you, hey, today, no. Um, maybe because of news, um, you don't want to trade that kind of strategy when news are um, upcoming. Um, I can tell you that I always trade news as well um, on, the, on those days. So I don't care about whether we have a news day, some, some uh, Fed um, um, interest rate decisions. No, I always go for that strategy and don't stop it. But other people might say, no, not today. So other good reasons to say, no, not um, we will stop that strategy. Let's look a little bit how that strategy really runs. Um, if we go for a live example, um, live now it means uh, that I share with you um, a video sequence in order to have a look on that strategy. I know that uh, at least yesterday it worked well that uh, even that video can be transferred via um, GoToWebinar. But let's, before I start the video, let's already um, look what we have here. Later you will see the time goes on. We start here in 2013. Um, the x-axis is a little bit unusual. Uh, it's just counting the number of candles. But um, you will see the time will move on here. And then, in this case, we have uh, US dollar, Japanese yen. You will see that I always um, have those rectangles here uh, in, in the chart. They create the range. And then, in this case, the buy stop order, which would have been placed exactly um, with the end of that candle. Then that buy stop order has been triggered and later the day either the take profit is reached or not mentioned up to now. I personally trade um, breakout strategies always as intraday strategies, meaning um, at latest before 11 German time, I close a trade um, regarding less um, where it's now, simply to avoid swap costs. And I don't want to have overnight trades. Um, finally, I don't want to ask myself on the next morning, hey, I have still a running trade from yesterday. Should I enter a new trade? Yes or no? And uh, finally, what I definitely don't want to have within that strategy is to have over weekend trades. Uh, then there's always a risk of gaps. So therefore, I, tr um, I close um, before I go to bed those trades finally. In this case, uh, the time stop um, has been activated. That's the name I give it always. That is time stop. And now let's go for action here. Um, so I start now the video and you will see now we get a new uh, range and I uh, stop the video already once again. That rectangular here has been only black, meaning minimum range condition violated. So the, the range was not big enough to say I want to have those two orders. Um, it would have, in this case, it would have not been that bad because the, the 
uh, long trade uh, would have been a success anyhow. But um, that is a definition. Let's go on here. So range big enough, therefore green. But now we have the situation we don't break that range. Therefore, no trade has been triggered. Now we get a new trade here, um, uh, a profitable trade. Next day, new range. Uh, you see the trade, okay, profitable in this case, and so on. Uh, everything is, so to say, live uh, in a sense that it's uh, history, but you see we really get a sequence of trades here, and that is exactly how the strategy runs. We look for the range, decide big enough, yes or no, we place our orders, um, and now we have uh, two days um, in a row um, two small ranges now it's big enough unfortunately let's see where that um, error ends it was a minus trade and so on and so on that's a complete strategy in this case us dollar japanese yen and since you see uh, how now the strategy works in that video sequence here let's have another view on the complete equity um, but now we need a video which is running much faster. And um, I know that works. And now please concentrate here on the inlet within that graph. Uh, that's the equity. We are now looking for 10 years breakout scenarios, always with the same time, always with the same parameters. I emphasize that because in the next webinar in two weeks, we will transfer that kind of strategy to a self-adapting strategy. But that's a topic for in two, um, in two weeks. Let's start the videos here. Now, don't care about the details. I even will go even faster. Now it's time to look how such an equity over 10 years of breakout scenario uh, develop and I know that you're you're um, you're looking um, on the screen right now is um, simply stepwise, but you see how that equity creates, um, and you see there's more or less a straight line developing for a very quite well uh, good equity here. So now it's over ten years, um, ten years breakout strategy with one single set of parameters as always we have drawdowns those drawdowns might even last one year i know that but that belongs to strategies at all and nevertheless we have a quite well linear increase which is well and I think everybody would like to have those kind of equities in his or her personal account. So that's the way a breakout strategy works. Let's go back how we can go on here. Um, I mentioned that there's a very nice indicator and you might simply Google for uh, that name or you send me an email and I will send around that indicator to you as well. Um, that indicator, for whatever reason, is called TC24 Asian Session. It even doesn't have anything to do with Asian sessions, but that's the name of uh, that indicator. And that indicator, I will show live how it works because that indicator helps uh, you to 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 get uh, breakout scenarios in your MT4 account um, quite easily uh, transferred. What you need is simply the range start time and the range end time. And then you adjust colors and uh, the thickness of the lines uh, you will see in a minute. I already, already here give you the the um the tip or trick uh, on that think about you want to have range times from 10 10 to 12. what you have finally to do within that indicator uh, don't um, press 10 to 12 just press one minute before 9 59 and 11 59 it has to do with the details of that indicator otherwise you will get small deviations and not exactly those candles you want to have. You will see in a minute. 
And the other thing to note is that um, you have to think in broker time. Whatever times you enter here in uh, that indicator, they apply to the broker time. So the time which is shown in your MT4 account. So for example, at JFD, we have that, um, at least compared to, to uh, Germany, we have that one hour time shift. Um, and then if we want to go for 10 to 12, let's call it German time uh, or Middle East uh, standard time, then I have um, to adjust that one hour time shift. But now let me show you that indicator live here. And um, that is simply how it works. That is the name of that indicator in my indicator list. And now I can set up here range times. Uh, for example, I want to go originally maybe from 1 uh, to 6. And yet now you remember, okay, change to 5.59. And here um, it would be um, 0 59 and then let's change um, a little bit the sickness because I know normally you don't see it if they are too thin and that's all and now you see exactly what I mean with my ranges let me prepare the chart here a little bit uh, further um, without uh, uh, this one and with this one uh, now I have activated the period um, separator that means those vertical lines here are uh, the end of the day so midnight and now you see exactly that range by two lines and you can immediately see how the strategy in this case i have uh, the underlying australian dollar japanese uh, yen would have worked let's start here uh, so range is defined we would at the end of the range we would place our two orders uh, later the day at that position here the short order would have been triggered shortly afterwards we have been in the minus but finally at the end of the day even before swap costs trade would be would have been profitable next day not the same story uh, range defined our long trade would have been activated here. And then you see, even at the end of the day, it would have been a minus trade. Next day, short trade, profitable. Wow, what a trade on that next day. Uh, wonderful, strong move to the south. Then it was in that day here, we would have had the situation that no trade would have been triggered. Here we would have had our two um, orders but even that low here would not have triggered our trade so at the end of the day there would have been no trade and today mm, would look quite well so the good thing on that indicator is you get a visual impression on how a strategy strategy would work for me, that's personally not enough because what I have done here was to look for that strategy one, two, three, four, five, six days. Okay, that's not real statistics, but we can do such an analysis in Excel um, for longer time periods backwards. Or there are other uh, methods to, to do that, but um, that is at least one thing I want to share with you. That is that I have created an Excel sheet which is doing exactly that kind of job. But you see how the indicator works and uh, it's a helpful tool um, to have that indicator because then you can place your orders even manually and you get the ranges visualized within the chart. So it's really quite helpful. But now back to my slides, or even better to say, to we uh, go directly into Excel. Um, that Excel sheet I have created is, and we I only show now a shortcut of that. <laughs> shortcut means, um, in this case, I have reduced the data set, but only for the time I look to that 
within the webinar. The Excel sheet I want to share with you is a complete set. And that has a history of, um, I think, eight years or seven years. In this case, S&P 500. So don't care that it looks like the equity is not that good, but we will talk about that um, for the last uh, uh, seven months. But anyhow, I can tell you strategy works and uh, works with those kind of settings quite well. So Excel sheet here means we can change parameters as always. And you might already have realized that I have quite strange numbers here. Uh, 930 and 960, what does it mean? It's the minutes until midnight. If you calculate, then you will realize that this one here is half past um, three. And this one here is formally four o'clock PM. But think about I have here M15 candles as being my data source of all of my data here. The M15 candle, which starts at four, ends at 4.15. So in total, if I apply those range times here, like 930 and 960, it's doing the job between half past three and a quarter to um, four. So in total, my, my range out period are three quarters, and, it, and this is exactly the market opening in, at uh, New York Stock Exchange. So we look for the first three quarters here of S&P 500 when the market goes live, and then we trade the breakout. And that's simply done within that Excel sheet with all the details, all the trades. And now we could change. In, I have applied here an EMA as an additional trend filter, and you might change the EMA period. And you see, then there will be some small changes uh, within the equity. Back to the question, oh, Stefan is presenting an equity which looks like this. That doesn't look good. But think about S&P 500 exactly during the last two or three, four months. Do we remember? Nothing happens at all. S&P 500 is within the last couple of months not the best underlying doing exactly that kind of breakout strategy. You know that the so-called VIX, the volatility index of S&P 500 is at all time lows and that even already for months more or less. So US stock, mar stock market is already in a deep sleep or um, nothing happens at all. Therefore, this strategy cannot be right now that profitable. But I know if you simply go with those numbers, the three first quarters starting at market opening and you use a trend filter of an EMA of 10, then you are on the right side for that kind of trading um, strategy. If, if you want to trade the S&P 500. You can have that Excel sheet even with more data, uh, then uh, just send me an email. And you can even replace the data here by other underlyings. You might change the times and uh, get your own private breakout strategy being tested. Uh, and you will get um, the equity line and the key figures about that kind of strategy. So that was the Excel one. But now let's go for three very good breakout strategies in a little bit more detail. Um, oh, no, I have to change here. So I want to share with you um, parameter sets for breakout scenarios. And we will uh, simultaneously um, not only look to the parameters, we will look to the live accounts as well. So first strategy is a strategy which simply combines several breakout strategies within a day. 
formally i have within that one strategy six sub strategies therefore dax one dax two dax three and so on and i those they, those sub strategies they run totally independent the one does not see the other they have their own range times own ema as being the trend filter own risk reward ratios oh that's still german crv is risk reward ratio or in german it would more mean change the chance uh, risk verhältnis anyhow so that is the risk reward ratio and i apply a minimum range in percent what does it mean think about if the dax creates a price range within that time range let's say upper limit 12050 lower limit 12000 then my relative minimum range simply means 12050 minus 12000 upper limit minus lower limit would be 50 in this case and then divided by the lower limit that means we get a percentage number for the size of our range and if my range is not big enough then i don't trade and you see the numbers and that will happen and if we go on here to s p 500 i can tell you that during the last three months i think i have only seen two or three trades on s p 500 always because the minimum range has been violated but that's okay um, it would have not been that good to have those trades but you see the certain time frames s p 500 for example is uh, has uh, one trade already in the morning it looks more or less for the complete night and then we have um, other range times uh, later the day um, not the market open but uh, a little bit different I mentioned already that uh, due to the abnormal low volatility of S&P 500, we don't have trades uh, right now uh, and during the last couple of uh, months. But anyhow, we have the DAX. And look here to the uh, S&P 500 and uh, DAX, you see no trades in um, S&P 500. But you can see trades um, ongoing here within the DAX. Three trades are open, um, three short trades. Uh, looks not that bad for today. Um, hopefully we don't get a sudden move to the north uh, from now onwards. But you see that account has started, um, I think it's now three months or four months, uh, has started at uh, 4,000 euro is now at uh, 4150 and a little bit but let's uh, have a even better view here uh, to the history of uh, those trades and i will create um, an equity of that live uh, strategy and you will see in a minute although s p 500 is not trading more or less we have those dax trades uh, during the day and um, those tax trades add up to this equity okay you may think hmm looks a little bit funny here a little bit up and down but anyhow in total it goes north um, and that's exactly what i want to see here so developing of that strategy is good and um, there will be time that s p 500 uh, comes into play here once again and uh, that we have that uh, being added to the strategy as it should be um, but it's only a question of uh, volatility so that's one breakout strategy honestly it's six strategies six sub strategies at working at different times Trades are always closed before swap costs would occur. No overnight trades. And um, in this case, the trades are already uh, closed at uh, 10 p.m. German time. 
um, because later, at least for the ducks, uh, the spread would be widened and uh, don't want to have that uh, being affected to my equity here. So therefore, close is already at 10. So that's one set already working absolutely well. I even share with you one example, because I'm honest with those kind of strategies, which is at least for the last couple of months doing not that well, and still I share it, uh, but it's the simplicity of that strategy, which is overwhelming, and I like it. And I know from a longer history, it's quite similar to the one US dollar Japanese yen we have looked in the video, is that Euro Japanese yen, looking for a range between 3 and 10 o'clock, was an EMA of 11 and a risk reward ratio 1.7. Um, yeah, let's look to, to that strategy as well here. Uh, it's uh, running live. So uh, let's look for today. We have a short trade. The short trade uh, has been triggered um, already directly after um, the order has been placed. And now we are short in the market, which is good for today. So um, the, today's trade is in the profit region. But nevertheless, the account has started by 1,000. It's uh, about 40 euros in the minus, but it's still absolutely okay. Uh, that's four months. I know those drawdowns periods uh, happen um, and they have happened and they will happen once again. But the longer history of that strategy is uh, absolutely well. Third example here uh, is the best one I have um, right now in my, my portfolio. That is a strategy on uh, so-called cable or uh, British pound US dollar. Totally different timing. So it's a little bit later the day. And um, since everything is here optimized, uh, I can only interpret my own optimization in a way that I say that we are later the day is it's time that the US market will come into play here. And the nice thing in, with that strategy is it's even acting with a risk reward ratio smaller than one. 0.9 and it's performing quite well here i apply the rule of a maximum range so if my range is too big within that time frame within the time period then i don't place my orders those orders itself are oco as already introduced at the very beginning and one cancels the other let's have a look to that account as well here uh, well, it's on a different server. Let me think where it is here. Here we go. Um, and uh, yeah, here we have the example. Today's trade, hmm, not working that well. Um, this one is in the minus. This account is only mm, two months old, I think. And now let's uh, have a look here to the equity, the detailed equity during um, the time period um, strategy has been activated and now here we go so here we have that kind of strategy hmm. first one and a half months already positive going well slowly but then since the last um, 15 trades um, most of them have been quite profitable so equity goes strongly north um, we have a hit rate up to now of 60 percent and we need such a hit rate here uh, because of our um, low risk reward ratio. So it's performing quite well um, in the range of 8% uh, plus. And good thing, because I always try to get uh, some strategies on extremely small accounts. Um, and uh, for this uh, strategy, I have been successful to even get a strategy up and running in a 500 euro uh, account and even then it works so um, um, it works definitely well with that uh, strategy on british pound us dollar so performing well um, even that today's trade does not look that 
promising and I don't expect uh, it will change um, until uh, before midnight that we get that trade uh, in the profit region but who knows um, that would be if you look more from a charting perspective would more be like a, a fake breakout so we have had that breakout but immediately went down the road uh, back into that range and now we are exactly in the middle of the range once again okay can happen um, as always uh, we never will have a sequence of only winner trades uh, in a row uh, because it's next to here uh, this is by the way the ducks uh, day of week seasonal um, so already um, six seven percent now plus uh, today's trade yeah it looks quite nice we have opened a short trade uh, and you see that that uh, candle here um, going south uh, very well so even that strategy introduced a couple of weeks ago is definitely worse than to be looked at okay so that have been now three well-defined um, strategies for breakout scenarios and at all i'm now on my summary here you see that breakout strategies are easy to be implemented so you start with a given price range how Ever you define the price range so what is the real origin of that price range day before week before or in those cases I presented here today um, just certain times range start time range end time and what you do is you place stop orders a buy stop upper limit sell stop lower limit and that's all what you do in most cases those orders are OCO or you use any other trend filter uh, like an EMA um, which we have done in two uh, strategies here as well I've given three examples with all relevant parameters which um, you can use by your own if you want and you have seen that there's a very nice indicator which helps to get that strategy up and running even manually because you can have with that indicator directly uh, the range being indicated in the chart and it's then uh, easy to um, place those orders my personal opinion is breakout strategies should be in everybody's trading toolbox uh, they are easy to go for and um, they are profitable which is I think uh, the best argument and you can adjust that kind of strategy you to your own settings quite well so that is good um, you you can change parameters and find um, your own one and about changing parameters that will be part of um, the webinar in two weeks about self-adjusting self uh, strategies and how to go with that kind of methodology I will uh, present in two weeks from now if you have any further questions just uh, get in touch with me you see my email address here um, I know it's really complicated s dot friedrichowski complicate last name and then at jftbrokers.com and you can have slides um, and um, no question i will send it to you and if you are interested in that excel sheet i will send you a link uh, to that um, huge um, s p 500 uh, file with uh, all inputs that you can optimize the strategy by your own yeah that's for today i hope you enjoyed the webinar and uh, i hope you i will see everybody of you again uh, in two weeks but um, yeah make sure or please uh, recognize that that there are a couple of other webinars even in english on the jfd uh, channel uh, you find them on jfd website and um, i can only recommend uh, wonderful colleagues there which have something to share as well so that's from my end for today and 
have a very nice evening. Um, see you back, hopefully, in two weeks from now. Bye-bye.